Welcome back, traders and investors. We have Randy Bateman on the line. Randy is president of Huntington Asset Advisors and CIO of Huntington Funds. Randy, how you doing this morning? I'm doing well. Let's just hope that the market is doing as well. Yeah, we're definitely going to get your opinion on that. So could you just give us a little bit of uh, like your education and kind of how you got to your position uh, that you are at Huntington? Okay, sure. Uh, it's been a long and circuitous route. I actually uh, I went to school at uh, NC State. Uh, I was Wolfpack. there on a wrestling scholarship and uh, decided that economics sounded to be the most interesting thing that I could come up with. And uh, when I graduated from school, went to work uh, in Raleigh at a bank uh, doing some uh, investment analysis. Uh, so I had that little bit of a background. Then moved to Memphis uh, in my career to... Uh, uh, work as a portfolio manager, then uh, worked my way further west to Texas, uh, where I headed up a department there for um, the old Mercantile National Bank, and uh, uh, we did a number of things with regard to uh, discount brokerage and uh, investment research. Uh, and then that bank got bought out, so I moved to Cincinnati, and uh, uh, then I was there for 10 years, and then uh, up to Columbus to work for Huntington. So I've been, You've been there uh, now. You, and you're in Columbus now? That's correct. Okay. All right. I won't hold that against you. Okay. <laughs> All right. You so, don't like Ohio State, huh? Uh, not exactly. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So you make an interesting comment here in, in some of your notes here, and you say the equity markets continue to march up, upward despite debt, earnings, international turmoil, tax, and regulatory headlines. So from that, I can infer you're a fundamental investor, and you're saying everything doesn't look so good, but the tape continues to take the market higher. Yeah, it's, it's uh, again, goes back to my economic background, I guess. You try to find logic in human nature, which sometimes doesn't work, but certainly uh, the numbers and the math always do work. And uh, one of the things that we've experienced in this country uh, is a sharp reduction in the number of uh, publicly traded corporations. Um, it, it's been interesting. I run the small cap fund for the bank, and um, I noticed that right after the passage of the Sarbanes-Oxley law that we had an awful lot of smaller cap companies that uh, – basically capitulated. It, it cost about 11 or $12 million each year to comply with the provisions, uh, and a lot of the smaller names just couldn't afford that. So they merged, or they went offshore, or they went private, uh, and we had a, a, a real spate of, of companies that just disappeared. Um, we're having the same thing now in the larger cap environment, it seems like. Uh, we've had 14 major companies uh, uh, in the last decade that uh, have um, merged and used this inversion scenario. Uh, we've had 44 uh, major companies that have gone uh, offshore and taken uh, a, um, an international corporate headquarters. And in fact, um, uh, really since uh, they peaked out in 1998, we had the number of listed companies on U.S. exchanges uh, were about 8,800. Um, and now we're looking at something just sh short of uh, 4,900 companies. Um, and I think that trend is, is probably going to accelerate. We've got the Dodd-Frank uh, law that's going to impose some costs uh, from a regulatory perspective on a lot of the financial institutions. And you've got the ACA that's, that's an also a regulatory situation that's going to have an impact uh, on the medical field. Plus, you've got this inversion scenario that... Um, is also going to prompt companies to um, find more um, uh, hospitable um, uh, shores uh, from a regulatory and tax perspective. Okay, so you think the merger and acquisition activity that we've seen in the large cap this year, the new regulatory pressures are kind of going to go to the smaller mid cap issues and stuff. So that's uh, so you look to see more consolidation in, in the smaller to mid caps than uh, this con continued M and A in the larger caps. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to carry over to that um, uh, to the smaller and the mid cap names as these regulations start to uh, become imposed. Uh, the larger caps get a lot of headlines, certainly, uh, and the inversion is, is much more uh, probably uh, palatable in the larger cap arena. But you know, now we've um, 
really we, we, we've only got about uh, 4,800 companies that most in mutual funds and uh, individual investors and institutional investors can actually invest in. And so it goes back to the old law of supply and demand, uh, economics 101. If you've got the same amount of dollars or more chasing uh, a smaller supply of uh, corporations and stocks, uh, what's the outcome? Well, price is the mitigating factor, and that's why in space of all these uh, market headwinds, uh, you're still seeing a market that uh, is, is chugging on upward and has been for the last uh, Six years or so. You sound like you're a bull by default almost. <laughs> Maybe that's the case. You have to be logical and you have to be rational. You don't want to fight the Fed. Uh, we all know that, uh, but you don't want to fight mathematics either. And uh, in this case, I think um, uh, it, it's, it's a compelling argument. We still have $2.7 trillion sitting in uh, uh, money market funds uh, on the sidelines and, and certainly. Uh, with a, uh, a real negative uh, after-tax, after-inflation yield uh, that they present, uh, that there's going to be more and more people prompted to get off the sidelines and into the equity market. Uh, I don't think that the bond market is, is particularly attractive in here. It doesn't have the same characteristics that it once had uh, in terms of both stability and income. Uh, so I think people are seeking income from equity sources and the use of option strategies and the like. Uh, and I think that's going to continue and maybe accelerate. And uh, if we still have this uh, shrinkage in the uh, uh, the number of companies that are tradable, uh, then uh, I think they, certainly the, the price will be uh, enhanced as a result. So let's talk about the Fed policy. They, they, got, they got it all going on now. They got low interest rates, low inflation, and uh, a global com- economy that is, I don't know, the, if you look at the last uh, – quarter GDP figures, uh, they're kind of saying that was just an aberration, but uh, how long can the Fed just, you know, orchestrate this, uh, I would say, near flawless monetary policy? Well, it, it may be flawless uh, in, in some ways. Uh, it certainly has helped out the equity market uh, as a result of that, but uh, when you consider that there's also an awful lot of people that have been relying upon the substitution of their uh, salaries for investment income, it, it's been a, a, a negative uh, for those individuals. It's been a very, very tough road to hoe. I, you know, think about my dad. He was uh, he's on a fixed income, and at 4% CD rates, he, he was happily living along. Now it's getting uh, 1.5% or 2%. His, his lifestyle's been cut in half as a result of that, and that, that's happening over and over again. So Fed policy is, is a two-edged sword, and we all know that they cannot continue to buy. So um, uh, at, at some stage of the game, there'll be a reckoning, and uh, it, it could be a, a real negative for our economy and uh, our investment markets. Yeah, right, you giving them uh, 2% over there in Huntington? Because I haven't seen uh, 2%. <laughs> Do you get a deal? Do you get a deal because he's your dad? Because uh, I... <laughs> Two percent. Let me know. Uh, yeah. Now, going ahead here, uh, we've seen a recent trend here of uh, companies, uh, Medtronic, uh, looking overseas to kind of uh, do a little earnings repatriation and kind of avoid the tax situation. Uh, we know there's other couple large cap companies that uh, got a lot of profits uh, overseas, uh, kind of protecting them from the U.S. government. Do you, you see that uh, a trend that's going to continue? Well, there's two trillion dollars in profits that have been stockpiled offshore, um, and uh, we know that that's there. Uh, they don't want to repatriate it because uh, they'll have to pay taxes on it as soon as it comes into uh, uh, our shoreline. So uh, I think that money is going to stay there, and you're going to probably see this prompt even more inversions uh, or discussions about inversions. I, I, you know. Uh, Congress has uh, presented some ideas as to how to overcome that. They've made a couple of steps, but there's always ways to get around that. And we live in such a global economy now. Um, uh, regulation needs and taxes need to uh, be aware of that. I mean, you have every year you have CNBC uh, puts out a uh, business friendly or business favorable states, and it's, it's a well watched program for for very good reasons. And um, 
Uh, we do live in an environment now where corporations can pick up and move from one state to another to, to, for tax purposes or regulatory purposes. But now in a global economy, uh, we can see the exact same thing uh, uh, from one country to another. And uh, I don't think that's going to change, and uh, politicians need to recognize that. And if we want to stay competitive, then we've got to, uh, uh, we've got to offer those competitive factors that are out there and certainly uh, – I need to listen to business as to what what it is that they want that they find attractive uh, in an environment and uh, um, try to present uh, a best combination of lower taxes and lower regulation with um, a need for some degree of governance over those corporations. Okay, and uh, just to wrap things up here, I mean, you've been pretty uh, consistent in your thesis here that uh, – just with all the mergers and acquisitions, limited amount of securities, trillions of dollars on the sideline in money funds, there's a supply-demand imbalance here that's just going to result in higher prices for equities. But can you give us anything that would really seriously change your, your, your thought process and you know your evaluation of the markets? Is it something from the Fed? Is it something you see in an earnings trend or do you think we're just so far embedded into this process here, it's almost going to be impossible to reverse? Well, I think that's going to be impossible to reverse. I think the inversion and the movement offshore uh, is probably going to continue uh, as long as we have the same tax policy. Things that could derail this uh, this market, um, there's a number of them, and it just depends upon what catalyst gets caught up in the media and the investor opinion uh, uh, some international turmoil that uh, gets accelerated in the Mideast, uh, a uh, financial collapse of, let's say, a bank in China uh, that would cause uh, a lot of sluggishness in uh, um, Chinese growth, uh, uh, any implications of uh, international uh, concerns over the dollar, um, and, uh, um, and certainly when the Fed does make its move um, uh, to... Uh, uh, maybe start tightening as opposed to having such enormous uh, monetary openness, uh, then that could uh, also spell the catalyst that would um, uh, bring this market down. Uh, now, we need to have probably uh, corrections from time to time. That's only healthy, um, and, and we certainly uh, recognize that they're going to be there, but it still seems that the longer-term trend is going to be based upon that real simple com concept of supply and demand and, and right now there's just fewer and fewer equities that uh, investors can um, employ in their investment strategies so it doesn't sound like you have any black swan puts in your portfolio <laughs> well we do use uh, a number of option strategies to try to mitigate those corrections as we see them and uh, uh, we are in an overvalued situation historically we do have all those uh, black swans that that may be out there um, uh, but uh, this 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 one big factor that that's uh, overwhelming everything, I think, is is probably going to continue. Okay, Randy Bateman and Randy. Next time we have you on, we'd like to perhaps talk about some of those uh, option strategies that you employ to uh, hedge your clients' portfolio. But thanks for coming on here, and uh, we'd like to have you on again. Great, thank you so much. Take care.